Unity of Houston is an inclusive church where we seek to understand and live the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. At Unity, we welcome all people from all spiritual paths and every walk of life. We celebrate the diversity of our city and of our world, and we teach love, tolerance, and oneness, seeking to live in harmony with open minds and open hearts. Wherever you are in your spiritual path, you are always welcome at Unity. Join us and discover that the life of your dreams is already within you. Good morning. I am here to talk to you about Armistice. Today is Armistice Day. In modern times, we call it Veterans Day. But the original name Armistice Day came from a ceasefire agreement that ended World War I back in 1928. Interestingly enough, I also learned about Armistice Day that the agreement itself that was signed by all parties was signed at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1928. Today is my birthday. I was born on 11-11. I was born at 5-11, and I weighed 6 pounds 11 ounces. <laughs> I'm not joking, this is true. And so I knew when the Holy Spirit woke me up at 4.47 in the morning to tell me to get in touch with Michael Gott and tell him I needed to do this talk on my birthday. I did uh, my normal thing when the Holy Spirit tells me something I'm resistant to. I ignored it. And like it normally does, it continued every day for about five or six days to wake me up at 4.47 in the morning and tell me again. Finally, I contacted Michael Gott. He said, of course. My excuse was I didn't want to bother him. He has too much to do. He's running this huge church and da, 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 da. But here is the final piece that I learned after Michael had said, of course was that we are in an 11 year. 11 is the Christ number, my beloveds. One and one, side by side. And we are the Christ. The Christ in us is our hope of glory and the hope of glory of our nation and of our world. And what is going on is that we are being called to something bigger than we have ever known or done in our lives or in our many lives. Yeah. There is a chaos, a separation, an atmosphere of fear and hatred, criticism, condemnation, or, and judgment, which we call CCJ going on in our nation and in our world, and we, I'm talking about you and me, are being called to stand up in our Christ and create something new. We are being called to have a ceasefire within us between God and the ego. Because if you look carefully, what you are seeing primarily in our nation, in our world, is ego. The ego is loud and in living color. 
and it will get our attention and have us do what it wants us to do because it is persistent. But you see, there's another voice that's being spoken to us as well. It's the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is that divine essence that was sent out as an emissary when God realized that we were not hearing what we needed to hear to do what we needed to do. So the, the Holy Spirit was given to us as a voice to be closer to our ears and in the very essence of our being that we would turn to that voice. You see, God really was, isn't aware of the ego. The ego is very much aware of God and the ego is terrified of God because the ego recognizes if we are listening to God, we are not listening to it. And therefore, we become a threat to its existence. But if we look at all of the negative energy that has been suppressed, repressed, and pressed down into the earth that is now no longer able to contain itself and is rising up before us, to say, here I am. And now, this 11 year is a reminder of who we are and whose we are. That we have what it takes to turn this ship around before it hits an iceberg. But the key is that we have got to stop listening to the ego. We have got to start listening to the voice for God, the Holy Spirit. We have got to begin to bring peace within our own being if we are going to see peace within our world. Conflict creates conflict. Peace creates peace. <coughs> Choose this day which you will serve, as it says in the Bible. God or mammon. Mammon represents the ego. Now the thing about the ego is that you have to choose consistently not to hear the voice of the ego. You can't just say, I am ignoring the voice of the ego one time and it's done. It is persistent and consistent. And therefore, we have to be persistent and consistent in hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. We have to call upon it to speak for us and through us and as us. We have to call upon it to show us the way to manage our lives, to heal the things of our lives that need to be healing. We have to call upon it for everything. I call upon the Holy Spirit to pick up my clothes. I think I look kind of cute. <laughs> So if the Holy Spirit can make me look cute, the Holy Spirit can do all kinds of things. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the whole Spirit of God sent directly to us to be used to bring peace and harmony in our lives, to bring loving relationships among us and our brothers and sisters, to heal the wounds, to heal the broken hearts, to remove the pain and suffering that we are experiencing. We do not have to live in pain. You have what it takes within you to bring peace and joy and healing and wholeness and perfection in your life, in your family, 
in your community, in this ministry, in this city, in this nation, in the world. The scripture says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives it. So let not your heart be troubled and don't be afraid. I have given you peace. And the peace is within you. And if you're not feeling peace out here, check in. Check in, call for peace. Holy Spirit, bring peace within my being. Holy Spirit, bring peace within every fiber of my being and every aspect of my life. Every morning, before I get out of bed, I connect with the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. What would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say and to whom? I am willing to do your will. Just tell me in a way that I will understand. And let me tell you, my beloved, the Holy Spirit will show up. He showed up and told me to speak this Sunday. He showed up and, and pushed me out of my comfort zone, and I contacted Michael, and Michael said, of course. But you see, what we do is when the Holy Spirit comes to us and bring us something to do that we think is too big for our britches, Oh, no, not me. No, no, no. No, I, I, I'm not good enough to do that. Who am I to do this? And who are you not to do it? If not you, who? And if not now, my beloveds, when? I seriously doubt if we are enjoying the chaos that is going on in our world. I seek peace. And my elder brother, when before he left, said, I leave you my peace. Either I believe him or I don't. But if he was telling the truth, the peace is here and it's within us. And when we're looking for someone else outside of us to bring peace, we won't get it. But first we have to still the peace, with, with the chaos within us. You remember, as within, so without? So if, for instance, there's chaos in your family, bring the peace within you and watch the peace begin to take over in your family. If there's peace within your job, bring the peace within you and see if it will not take over in your job. You are the Christ. That is the hope of your glory. All you have to do is call upon the, assist the assistance of the Holy Spirit. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and serve the ego. You will either love one and hate the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. That's scripture in the Bible. Choose which one, which voice you will hear as you move through your day. So what this is, is calling us to do is to begin to be aware of everything that's going on. What are our feelings? What are our emotions? What are our thoughts? Are those things in alignment with truth or falsehood? So we begin to pay attention to what we're thinking. We begin to pay attention to our speech. Oh, I just, don't you just hate that, that movie? Don't you just hate that dress? Don't you just hate that person, that neighbor of yours? H-A-T-E, hurling accusations through the ethers. I love my neighbor. Maybe I don't like him, but the Bible says, Love one another as I have loved you. It does not say like one another as I have liked you. So our job is to love. You see, we don't have to figure out how to love. We just love. 
because the Holy Spirit will take that love and carry it forward, touch that neighbor. All of a sudden, that neighbor will start being like somebody you've never seen before. And you start to say, wow, he changed. No, you changed. You changed your perception of that neighbor. And the moment you have a shift in perception, according to divine law, everything in your purview must shift along with it. So either you trust God or you don't. God says, I have sent you the Holy Spirit to show you the way, to prepare the way for you, to fulfill your needs, to fulfill your purpose. So our work is to call upon the Holy Spirit, have a regular appointment with the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit for everything, to make your choices for you, to draw the right people into your life, to bring the right job for you, to help you pick out your car, to help you pick out your cute clothes. <laughs> because you see, the more you call on the Holy Spirit, the more comfortable you become with calling on the Holy Spirit, and it is always your first go-to. And you can't go wrong with its guidance because it loves you. The ego hates you. The ego is insane. It wants to kill that which created it. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to listen to that? Call upon the Holy Spirit. Speak to me. Speak to me. Tell me in a way that I will understand. It might have to wake you up at 4.47 in the morning. But just get up and say, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? And to whom? We must be able to begin to ascertain the difference between those two voices that are pouring into our ears. The voice of the ego is harsh and critical and cruel and it's mean and it's condemning and it's judging and it hates you. It does not want you to be happy. It does not want you to be comfortable. It does not want you to be secure. It does not want you to be successful. So it will throw up all of the hindrances for the good in your life. It will lead you down a hole in the ground. Whereas the Holy Spirit will always lift you to heavenly experiences. And it is, has a soft and, and sweet and gentle voice, and it loves you. So we have to begin to be aware of which voice we are hearing. If it asks you to criticize somebody, that's not the Holy Spirit. We have to begin to connect with peace within ourselves. We have to begin to see our brothers and sisters and ourselves as God sees us, whole and perfect as we were created, whether they're behaving that way or not. Remember, you have to love them. You don't have to like them. And as we begin to do this, we, we begin to bring peace into ourselves. And of course, my beloved, as we bring peace into ourselves, we begin to emanate peace in all the rest of our lives. And isn't that what we want? Are we not tired of the conflict? So I'm asking you, to begin to choose, choose, and choose again, and choose again, until it becomes second nature for you to choose the Holy Spirit. 
and allowing God and the Holy Spirit to make you an instrument of peace. To make you a channel for love, for healing. I believe we can do it. I truly believe we can do it. I want to offer you the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love where there is injury pardon where there is doubt faith where there is despair Consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we Thank you for watching this message today. I'd like to invite you to join us in person here on campus at Unity of Houston for Sunday morning or Wednesday evening services. If you can't be with us here on our campus, you can still join us live on Facebook or on our website, unityhouston.org, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Central.